I would, <laughs> I continue to have fun making these. I continue to have lots of ideas for them. Uh, the day will come where the process of editing video um, and being able to do more creative things with it. Oh shit, I'm gonna sneeze, hold on. <coughs> oh, oh god. No, please hold. I just casually finished uploading all of those videos to my laptop. I was hanging out, done for the night, watching the new Rachel Maxi, you know, eating fruit and getting ready to take a shower, go to bed. When I realized I never actually filmed an intro to this one, I think I just started filming myself do it because I <laughs> didn't feel like talking to the camera and I totally forgot. So here we are doing the intro. Hello and welcome back. It's been a minute. Really trying, I promise I'm trying my best to learn how to uh, quickly edit video, but like, boy is it, <laughs> is it hard. No wonder this is people's career. Um, anyway, we are going to do some mending. Uh, when I was changing over all like the clothes and, um, and all the winter to summer stuff, like putting coats away and things like that, I went through everything um, and was just looking for things with holes, anything with tears, and I found, um, as you'll see, a good number of things that needed a little bit of TLC. So uh, today we're gonna do a bunch of different types of things. We're gonna um, use darning looms and like put some patches on socks. We're gonna fix up um, some bed things. Uh, gonna fix a hole in um, a knitted piece of fabric as well as woven pieces of fabric. And it's gonna be a great time. Um, I've been really getting into seeing what people do in the sort of visible mending space, um, which is, you know, a lot of different things and a lot of like really cool and talented and, and um, uh, really impressive people um, making really beautiful repairs to things. Uh, yeah, and it's just like a vibe that I really enjoy. Um, and I think obviously if you're somebody who makes a lot of clothes and makes a lot of things like the ability and the knowledge to properly repair those is pretty important and it's not something i've done a lot of before so yeah these are the katrinkles darning looms i have the full set so i have the smaller one here i have the bigger one and i also have the heddle expansion set I uh, really like working with these. They're really easy. Uh, I got mine at Woolen in Brooklyn because that's where I get everything. <clears throat> uh, so I can link that below. But yeah, they're super handy and fun. And then I just have, you know, leftover superwash, fingering weight, yarn, you know, just things in my stash. And at least for me, you know, I think we all have our little things that we like to have on while we're crafting or doing things. See, yep, there's that hole. Uh, for me, it is turning on Murder, She Wrote. So, yep, the thing that I'm sort of looking at <laughs> right now, you can see in these shots, is that I am watching Murder, She Wrote, hanging out, darning these socks, and having a lovely time. You can see that I'm using a really, really long strand of yarn pulling through these. That's just because, you know, under normal circumstances, if you're mending a hole in a hand-knitted sock, you'll be able to weave in those ends just with the regular knitting of the sock. But of course, these are some, you know, bullshit, like socks from Target. <laughs> so it makes it, you know, really a bit trickier to have the ends. So I wanted to make sure I had as few ends as possible. So I wanted to make sure I gave myself enough slack uh, that I could warp um, the loom itself and then, you know, also go back and forth with the weft. But yeah, really easy to get going, nice, I don't know, honestly a really nice way to spend an afternoon. Um, as I'm going to talk about sort of at the end of this clip, um, I've been having some recurring sinus issues over the summer, uh, so it was kind of nice to like, you know, be resting, being inside, uh, <laughs> kind of taking it easy, being on a lot of, you know, decongestants, drinking a lot of tea, and uh, having this sort of nice thing to do. And it's it's a lot of fun. It's very satisfying. Um, and I will say, even with working with these machine knits, that, you know, because it's so 
tight and it's so, you know, small and you don't have a lot of space to work with like you would even in a really small gauge uh, hand knit piece. Um, I would say with these looms and the needles that could trinkles leaves with them, definitely like it was, it was easy. It was fine. Um, so I would say like, yeah, it'll, it's definitely, it, it gets the job done. So, yep, just hanging out here, pulling them through, la da da. Hope this voiceover sounds okay. I actually happen to have a decent, um, blue microphone. Blue, the I have the Snowball. I don't have, like, the, the fancy Yeti one, but I think it will make these voiceovers sound decent. La da da. You can see some of my concept art for my, um, tapestry work <laughs> on the wall next to me as well. Do, do, do. Yep, I think we're about, I'm about done. Okay, yep, here we go. <gasps> and there it is! A cute little woven patch. Yay! Yeah, so really, that's that's all there is to it. And then I turn the sock inside out. And kind of what I did was I just did a little running stitch um, in the the fabric um, on the inside of the sock. So you're not going to see it. It'll hold fine, you know. It's Is it pretty? No. But, you know, again, these are extremely cheap fast fashion socks that I think most people would probably have just thrown away but I decided to fix <laughs> with hand dyed yarn. Sun is going down. I have finished all the holes in the socks that I needed to fix and it is that time of day where for the past like a week and a half I begin to turn into a pumpkin uh, by which I mean the lovely sinus infection that I'm dealing with comes back and starts to make this half of my face really painful so yeah I'm gonna be done for today <laughs> and we'll see uh, if we can fix up the scuff in the quilt before the witching hour hits tomorrow <laughs> Up next, yep, I've got a pretty nasty couple of tears in this quilted pillowcase uh, that a friend gave me. Shout out to Tammy. Uh, she made this for me a long time ago. Um, and yep, and I have a little, a little small spotted monster who lives with me. And uh, she seems to add a bit of wear and tear to my items. It's almost like she likes to nibble on things and that she has claws. Interesting coincidence. Little jerk. But yeah, this was super easy. Um, the nice thing about this was that uh, because it's a pillowcase, the back of it can look however it needs to look because only nobody's ever going to see anything but the front. So I have, um, as you could see, those tears were big enough that I just needed to do a patch. So I have um, just this bit of uh, quilting fabric that I just have lying lying around um, in this really cute print uh, that I love that has like kitty cats sitting on furniture. So I just measured out patches in big enough sizes. Um, 
ironed them so the uh, raw edges are in the inside and then I'm just doing you know you can see I have it pinned in place and I'm just doing a nice back stitch all around i um, doing it by hand because the pillowcase is shaped in such a way that it couldn't really quite fit into my sewing machine but you know thing like this doesn't take that long enough if you even if you're if you're worried about hand stitching a hand done back stitch is a very strong way to secure things it actually kind of mimics um, what a sewing machine does um, in terms of you know where the threads are and how things are secured down so this is gonna be a nice nice secure fix that's going to prevent those tears from getting worse and that's what you want Hello, hello. We are coming just about to the end of the mending marathon. I just have a couple more things that I want to fix, and I think I might be able to actually get it all done today. Maybe? Question mark? Maybe tomorrow? Uh, the first thing that I want to do, which I think is actually going to go pretty quickly, is uh, fix a sweater that I made possibly like 15 years ago if not like more than 15 years ago hold on let me go get it so this is the one and only intarsia project i have ever done uh for the knitters intarsia is when you're making a picture like this on a knitted piece um it, so it's not like the color isn't going all the way around it's just like in different blocks um, if you are a knitter who enjoys intarsia, good for you. I did not. <laughs> I made this adorable sweater to have the experience of doing it and uh, never again. Uh, involves lots of loose ends that I may or may not have even bothered to properly sew in. But we don't have to talk about that. Uh, yeah, and a lot of weird tension stuff, and it's just, it's very, like, fussy in particular, and it's not my favorite thing to do. Uh, this sweater, however, I love. It's one of my favorite things that I made. It's one of the oldest things that I have, um, that I can still wear, because when I, I was very little, <laughs> I was, like, eight when I started knitting, so a lot of the first things that I made, like, my first sweaters, like, they were made for a child, so I can't wear them anymore, uh, but this is, because this is, like, size like it's great and look it has <laughs> like the bare ears on like are you like look at this it's great I love the sweater it's it's the yarn is so nice like it's such and it as much as it was a pain in the ass the bare face came out super well I've always been very proud of it and then oh man you can tell how old it is because it's it's how much pilling it is and honestly like not for nothing, little detour. This is like a good reason to, um, if you can, because I know not everybody can for every project all the time, but if you can get high quality, 100% wool yarn, like again, this sweater, 15 years old at least, probably more. And this is, this is the extent to which it's, it's pilling. Like, like, yeah, it is like I need to take a shave or to it, but like, it's not bad. 15 years like you know but anyway so about the time um that I was moving in uh with Justin uh he actually was the one who noticed there is this hole in the back um I originally thought that it was a moth hole but actually now that I'm looking at it, it just looks like it was ripped this doesn't look like what what moths do and that would also make a lot more sense because like I didn't have usually if you have moths like uh, you don't just end up with the one hole in the one sweater like it, it's kind of a disaster and that was not the case for this so this looks like it just got caught on something and it snapped but like I was so I, I'm so proud of the sweater and <laughs> I love it so much um, it's so comfy and like something cool that I made that I just saw this massive hole in it and I could not process that and I just put it away 
And then this was like, a, and again, this was, you know, when I was moving in with Justin. So this was a few years ago at this point. This was before I knew how to uh, fix holes in knitted garments. It's before I knew how to use um, those uh, uh, little looms to fix things. This is going to be super simple to repair. I think I'm going to do it with, um, I have just like a skein of like, it's just like a one ply, um, uh, woolen spun of this, uh, Jacob, uh, top that I have. I got like a pound bag of it and I do like all my sampling experimental spins with it just to like practice and try new techniques. And I think that's going to be, cause you know, there's no, I, I'm, I'm not going to find the yarn, <laughs> the exact yarn that I use for this. Like if I even ever had any leftover from the sweater, it is long gone. Again, 15 year old sweater. So I think the best way to go is with something that's going to um, coordinate well with it so that Jacob, it's an undyed uh, black. So, um, so really like a very, very dark brown that I think is gonna complement this blue really nicely. And it's also, um, because it's woolen spun, it's a bit fuzzy and it's, I think the texture is gonna work well with the texture of the rest of the yarn. So I'm gonna grab uh, one of my, my bigger mending loom in the big yarn needle and I'm going to take care of this. Oh my gosh, yes. So after uh, using the darning looms on my socks, on the like fast fashion, you know, machine knit socks, doing this fix on an actual like not just a hand knitted piece but something with such a big gauge as this oh such a dream so easy so easy oh and it's so nice because you can make it nice and perfectly straight because you just go on you know you just pick a leg of the stitch that you want to do and you just do you know you just go up and down the rows um so yeah, super, super easy. Uh, the yarn that I decided to use um, did work really well for it. Um, really, I know, I know that it's, you know, especially if you're a knitter and getting holes in things, it's like we all get so afraid of, of holes and we think it's the end of the world, but it's like you, you really can, something like this, it really does secure it in a practical way that you don't have to be afraid of continuing to wear your garment. I know that like so many, <laughs> so many of us, like that's whenever you talk to somebody who's like never cut a steak before, they're like, oh my God, oh my God. It's like, no, it's fine. Like it's not gonna, you know, your fabric's not gonna fall apart. It's gonna, you know, things are, are structured to, to keep together. Yep. See here I am just tacking down the ends and there it is yeah and once again unlike <laughs> unlike those socks weaving in the ends for this was extremely easy <laughs> you could just weave it in like you'd normally weave your ends um, for something like this where I'm using such a contrasting color I kind of did a little bit of checking to make sure it wasn't you know showing through the front um, I didn't do like a duplicate stitch or anything like that just because I wanted to keep that the brown hit it in those spots but yeah super easy super easy yep I'm just sewing in the other end yeah you can tell it's hand spun because it's all fluffy at that end there and yeah we're done just as a side note um, these little sheep bobbins are also from Katrinkles uh, and they're pretty, like, stupid, ridiculously cute, especially when you have some yarn wound around them. Here, I'm about to show you. Like, get out of here with that. That's adorable! Here we are, the quilt. The quilt with so many rips because, you know,
I keep blaming all this on Penny, but like, you know, this quilt gets a lot of use. We're in a teeny tiny apartment. We're on the bed most of the day. Yeah, so many, so many tears. Oh, God. But also, ooh, yes, yeah, so many beautiful colors of DMC. I kind of went to Michael's and just said, Gib, Gib all, Gib all to me, Gib. I'm mystical with you. The, the fact of it is that uh, modern quilting cotton that, you know, you're going to get to make quilts uh, is not the sturdiest of fabrics. It's very lightweight. Like if, it, if you've ever tried to use it to like make clothes or something, you know that it's really bad for making garments because it's very transparent. It's And that works great for quilting because when you're quilting, you're it's literally layers of fabric and filling. So it's like you can sew those layers together um, and they trap heat well and it works for what a quilt is, but it means that it is kind of subject to uh, getting kind of scraped up. And this one uh, has been scraped up a decent amount, enough that I do feel like I need to amend my original plan for fixing it. Because even as like I came up with the plan and I was paying attention to the rips and I saw how quickly they were getting worse and I found more. So I think I need to do something sturdier than what I originally thought. In places where like with the quilted pillow that I'm just gonna need to I'm just going to need to put a patch on it, otherwise it's just going to, you know, be a repair that holds for a week and then is immediately going to need fixing again. So we're just going to take a look. I actually think it's easier, going to be easier for me to just leave it on the bed because there's all this light coming through. It's all flat. Like it's, I think it's going to be the easiest way to tackle it. Um, and my, my goal is to not fully bring the needle and thread through all the layers of the quilt because the other side of it has ugh. the other side of it is also a really cute fabric with wiener dogs on it and I don't want to um, mess up the wiener dog fabric um, it's not like the pillowcase where the inside of it is just the inside of it and nobody sees it um, so I would like to maintain this being reversible uh, but yeah, obviously the priority is making sure that we can continue to snuggle on it for a long time to come, isn't that right? Yeah. I may have to take it off just if this one, uh, decides that, you know, repairs to the blankie she's snoozing on are not allowed. Who's to say? You're such a good girl. You're being so cute right now. She's like, yeah, I'm cute all the time. Whatever. Whatever. Hi. You're so good. Oh, we're a good girl. Yeah. You're a good puppy. Oh, she's good. Yes. Hi. Oh, yes. Yes. You're my girl. Yeah, hi. Hi, it's about you. It's all about you. Here, get up on you. Yeah, this is what it's like. This is what it's like. Good, my sweet snuggle girl. This is what we do. It's like, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't embarrass me, mom, God. Yeah, it was so much easier to just leave it on the bed and sew it as is uh but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna end up talking about it um in a later clip but the thing that i'm discovering as i'm doing this repair right now so right now uh, i'm just fixing the corner of one of the patches that it's not torn it just was coming up um on the corner so i'm just reattaching that uh but the thing that i'm realizing as i'm doing these is that there's really kind of no great anchoring point because even if the fabric isn't torn it is very worn down and kind of threadbare um i did i talked to rachel at woolen who again is where i get <laughs> all of my advice for everything and she pointed out that um it could be a good idea to go in like just get like some fusible interfacing 
and like interface things and then sew the patch over the interfacing just to reinforce the fabric. Um, so that's something that I'm definitely going to consider uh, just because, yeah, it's, it's not... It's not just like a couple places, like even if it's not torn, it's in pretty rough shape. Uh, so we're just going to see, yeah, you can see I'm doing that same thing that I did for the pillowcase, which is I'm cutting out those squares of the, that darker blue quilting cotton to use as patches. So yeah, may or may not go back in with the interfacing. We may also just sort of, um, call it, you know, call it a day and, and flip it to the other side. Uh, yep. Yep. I did that little patch, which it looks really cute, but yeah, we're going to see even that you can even see it's, it's kind of funny if you get the, if you look at the edges of, of the quilt that's like hanging down over the bed, the bed versus what's in the middle of the bed, like the light <laughs> bleaching is so much. And then we've got some little puppy paws and that pretty yes see that's where I tacked down the corner and it looks very pretty and now well and then we just got a little a little cutie butt Yay! all well not all done uh, as you can see those are two repairs and I probably have oh you know a good 10 spots that need it but as I was sewing the patch on you can see it's like a it's a visible like decorative stitch which is what I wanted because um, I really like the colors of the floss and I just really like uh, the you know that it brings attention to the fact that it's a patch um, uh, however I because I was doing that kind of technique that like both gives me that pretty you know visible little overlocking kind of like <laughs> Uh, this isn't exactly a cute reference, but like like a Frankenstein stitch, but like cute. <laughs> it's the only way I could to describe it. Um, but anyway, because I was doing that and because I was just working with that top layer of cotton, um, I did notice as I was sewing that patch on that the fabric that I'm anchoring it to is pretty worn in and of itself. So I'm actually, I, I'm a little bit concerned that sewing them on that way is actually going to make those spots rip faster because I'll be sort of adding tension with the stitches. Um, it's not like I was yanking things, but like still like you're making holes when you're sewing, you're pulling thread through. So I'm actually going to leave that just that one little one that I did for maybe a few weeks, keep an eye on it, see what happens. If it seems like that's a good technique and that it's going to hold and it's going to be fine then I will do the rest of the tears like that I have um all the patches um cut out and ironed and ready to go and measured um but if it seems like it's just making the problems worse I will just bite the bullet and sew all the way through um to the other side and do that back stitch like I did um on the pillow uh, will it be kind of disappointing to sort of mar the, the dachshund pattern? Yes. Um, that's sort of like, unlike the, you know, the really contrasty patches and the different, you know, colored threads and stuff like, which, you know, is purposeful, but like looks in intentional and looks artistic and is very much like the aesthetic of visible mending. Um, those sort of like ends of the of the back stitch on the other end of the quilt will just kind of be like not cute. Um, so I hope I don't have to do that. Um, but if it's what's going to maintain the utility of the quilt for longer, then you know we just we're we'll do what we're going to do. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to like it feels kind of like I'm cheating because <laughs> I have a lot more of those rips to do, but also. I just, I don't, I just want to see how it goes with this one. I'm not, you know, an expert mender by any means. I'm not a quilter, so I don't know the correct ways of really fixing it. So I just, um, I really don't want to like take this, um, this great quilt uh, that I would like to repair and ruin it by doing something dumb. So anyway, that is the end of the Mendapalooza. Um, 
Yeah, I had a lot of fun fixing all these things. I even fixed a couple things that I uh, didn't film just because they weren't very exciting. Uh, yeah, I think it's, you know, the, the whole idea about visible mending being like something where you make the fix to something, the repair to something, part of the piece and part of the life of it and part of what makes it beautiful. Um, I don't know, it's just really nice. You know, there's in the history of this, these objects, it'll be, you know, the person who made it and then, uh, you know, it lived in my house and I sort of did the work to take care of it when it was here and that's also visible on it. It feels very satisfying uh, to be able to, you know, take something that uh, is worn out or has a problem and to fix it. It's good. It's good for your soul. It's good for your brain. It's good for the world. It's, you know, it's good for whatever. So, so yeah, I'm going to uh, take the dog for a walk and uh, probably spend the rest of my evening, uh, I don't know, I guess starting to edit this video. Yeah. Let's get to it. Let's get to fixin'. Can we fix it? I'm gonna trust that you said it. This is not helpful. This is not, it's not helpful. Hi. You're so good. Passing through on my way north. I'm just trying to figure out Route 182 is the best way to go. Do you mind stepping out of your vehicle, sir? And please keep your hands wherever you can. And also, the reality of it is, is that the uh, modern quilting cotton that you buy today, that people, you know, make quilts out of, it's it's not. Hi. Do you, do you really? Yeah. This is what my life is. I continue to have fun making these. I continue to have lots of ideas for them. Uh, the day will come where the process of editing video um, and being able to do more creative things with it. Oh shit, I'm gonna sneeze, hold on. <coughs> oh, oh God, oh. You want a tissue on me? No, please hold, oh.